Pace 1098 of Algebra 1. We're going to tackle, I think, some of the toughest stuff so far in Algebra 1 here on pages 13 through 16. I mean, look at this problem. Goodness gracious. That thing is crazy long. We're going to actually, you know what, I actually like doing problems that you have to do in your homework. I don't, we're not doing them all, and I'm not giving you the final answers to them. But I know it's motivating if you watch the video to think I actually got help with a problem that I actually have to do for my homework. So um, I could make up problems that are similar, but then it's not the one you're struggling with. So I tried to pick three problems that are representative from this lesson, okay? And uh, see if it helps you. Now, I noticed here at the top of page 16, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but there's several steps here to follow. And um, I may not memorize and quote them in exactly the right order, but let's, uh, let's try to do it here. Here we go. If we have a fraction, those fractions always are intimidating to students, okay? Students hate fractions for the most part, and when they see them, they just kind of freeze up like, oh no, fractions, I don't know how to do fractions. So here's the ticket, okay? This is really easy. You find the, denom the common denominator. So in other words, if we had fractions on both sides, you would look at both of those denominators and get a common denominator. So for instance, if I had eight over here, and like one-third over here, then I would want to use 24. But whatever the common denominator is, in this case it's 8. I'm just going to multiply the entire equation, this marker isn't working too great, times 8. So when I multiply 8 times this, the 8 cancels against the 8 and I get 5x. Now what's 8 times 5? 40. Okay. <clears throat> so now the final answer is I divide both sides by the 5 and you'll have the answer. Okay, so I'll let you finish that one. But the ticket again is you get the common denominator and multiply everything, everything in the entire equation by that common denominator. Now let's take, um, for some reason this black marker is not doing too great. Hopefully this brown one you can see. We'll try it. We have parentheses in the middle of a problem. That's called distributive property. So we're going to take whatever the outside number is <clears throat> and multiply it. Or in other words, distribute that multiplication to both of the things that are inside the parentheses. So this one's real easy. I'm going to take the 5x times x, or 5 times x rather, and then 5 times 2 is 10. So I've distributed that out and get 5x plus 10. I think the paste calls it distributive axiom. I always call it distributive property. Same thing, okay? Now I have a parentheses here, but we have a problem. We have a negative right in front of that parentheses. And sometimes that throws students for a little bit of a loop and they think they can just take away the parentheses and have x minus 8x minus x minus 1. You'll get it, you'll get it wrong. So one little step we have to do, I'm going to insert the number 1 in front of this, okay? And then I'm going to change this minus to plus a negative, okay? So what we're actually doing is distributing negative 1 times both of those. Very important, all right? Let's see what we get. x minus 8x, distribute the negative 1 times x. So I get negative 1x, distribute negative 1 times negative 1. Okay, do you see that? Negative 1 times negative 1, and that's how we get positive 1. Now, before I go any further, I have three x terms all here on the left. So let's combine them. What is 1x plus negative 8x? See, that would be negative 7x, right? Negative 7x plus negative 1x would be negative 8x plus 1 equals 5x plus 10. All right, now we're going to go back, and in the previous pages, up through page 10, we were doing a little bit of this, we get rid of the variable on the right. So we're going to subtract 5x, and over here, subtract 5x. So this will cancel out, and I'm left with 10. Okay, I should have drawn my line through here, so I'm keeping all the equal signs lined up. What's negative 8x minus 5x? Were you tempted to say 3x? No. Because remember, they're both negative. So we're adding, 
keep the common sign. So negative 8 plus negative 5 is actually negative 13x plus 1. Now I need to get rid of this 1, so we're going to subtract it on both sides, okay? And then I want you to take that to the end. So you're going to end up with negative 13x equals, it looks like 10 minus 1 is, mm -hmm, write it down. And then the last step is we want to divide by the coefficient on x. So you're going to divide by that negative 13, and you want to do that on both sides. And, uh, and you're done. You actually get a fraction for the answer, okay? Let's take a look at this doozy right here. All right, we'll end with this one. We have three sets of parentheses. This one, I think that's supposed to be an 8. Here I have, instead of x minus 6, I have 6 minus x. That's a little tricky, okay? I'm going to start here by distributing 5x minus 15. Now be careful here. Notice I have negative 7 times x, so it gives me negative 42 negative 7 times negative x, okay? Again, don't, don't ignore the fact that this sign goes with the 7. If you still want to write it as plus a negative 7, you can do that. But it's negative 7 times negative x. Negative times negative is positive, okay? That's one of the most common mistakes that students make in doing this kind of problem. We're going to see it again over here, okay? Plus 29 equals... Draw that line, okay? 50. Now, this is like negative 3 times 8, so negative 24. Negative 3 times negative x, again, negative times negative is positive, so plus 3x. Now, on each side, I want to combine whatever are like terms. So I have 15x, I have 7x, okay? And I can combine those two <clears throat> and get 22x. Then I can add negative 15 plus negative 42 plus 29, okay? And I want you to do that. I'm going to let you finish this. We kind of helped you with the hard part here. Over here, we can combine these two like terms. And then that would be um, 26 plus 3x, so I'm going to draw a line here for you to finish that. And then we have an x on both sides, and so we want to transpose that. All right, we want to move this over to this side. And then whatever number you got here, which it looks like it's going to end up being a, <coughs> excuse me, a negative number. So we're going to add that to this side to cancel this, and we're going to add the same number to 26, okay? So we're going to keep the two sides equal, carry it down, and when you get to the last step here, you'll have a coefficient in front of x. Divide by that coefficient on both sides, and you're done, okay? So let's look at it again. First of all, you get rid of all the parentheses by distributing this multiplication times both numbers. In the next step, combine any like terms. So these two are like terms. 15x and 7x are like terms. 15, negative 15, negative 42, positive 29, they're all like terms. Combine them. Gather them together. And then transpose the x that's on the right, get it over here to the left. Transpose the number and get it over to the right. Okay? Last step is divide by that coefficient on both sides. <clears throat> and you're done. All right, hopefully by tackling these toughest ones, some of the other problems on the page will seem a little easier. Check your work immediately, do well, and uh, I hope you can do well on the checkup, which follows right after this.